Well, welcome back, my friends. Welcome back, family. Um, welcome in. So, well, it's getting late, isn't it? Anyway, this is a good one. It's an important one. I didn't have this one on the docket. It just whoop, showed up on my desk um, in, in the last 15 minutes. So, let's do this. Get on your horses, ladies and gentlemen, and let's ride together. You know, it's my Monty Python. <laughs> you know, you're just clapping two coconuts together. Anyway, all right, so now that we've uh, we've all gathered up on our horses, let's take after this message. The line in the sand, where does courage happen? What is courage? How do you know you have courage? Where did it go? <laughs> what is courage? The line in the sand for courage is truth and lies. You know if you have courage when you're straddling between a truth and a lie, and you speak for the truth, then you have courage. And the root word of courage is Latin. <laughs> the Latin word for core and, and the root word of courage is actually, it's a word for the heart. And in one of the earliest forms, the word courage meant to speak one's mind by telling all one's heart. It meant stout hearted. And today we've kind of just knocked it around and we have brave. Courage means brave. A hero. Um, it meant to speak one's mind by telling all in one's heart. That's the truth. That's living authentic, authentic, authentically. <clears throat> Words are difficult. So is walking sometimes. Um, courage is pure and it's transparent and it's scary to walk in courage. It's scary to speak one's mind by telling all in one's heart. And, and showing people all that it is in our hearts is literally walking around uh, with no aces left to be holding because, you know, that's kind of how I'm walking around. But in that truth and in that nakedness is profound strength within itself because I found one in a million has got the bravery, the courage to do exactly that, to, to live and speak one's mind um, and their heart out loud. So that's the definition of courage. We find courage right down the line. And I want to do this. I wish I could draw on a graph and do all that. So go with me here. We're going to talk about lies and truth. So if we were going to make a box diagram, we'd have lies and truth. Okay, lies, we're going to do a little now and later. Lies, save your ass. Why do people lie? To save their ass. And that's because of right now. Okay, don't lie later. We don't lie about you know, later really that much. We lie now at the moment when asked. And usually we're lying to save our asses. So usually lying is a save your ass kind of move, a move to do. Later with a lie. A lie will become your downfall. Lies undo you. Lies are a house of cards, not any foundation a wise man would be building on. So lies now save our asses while lies later are our own damn downfall. When we flip that, we look at the other side of this bar graph that I invisibly drawn here in the air. <laughs> when we look at truth, when we speak the truth right now, when we're asked at that moment, the living now, there are more often times than not, you're literally going to be burned or lived or uppercutted because you told the truth. That's why only those with courage will do so. What's courage? To speak all in one's heart. So when you speak truth, your now is not to save your ass. Actually, when you speak truth, your now becomes you're going to be burned alive. Burned alive. <laughs> Juxt in the chin. You spoke truth. It's going to hurt. And it's going to hurt now. Okay? Later... Truth exonerates, frees, and shines through. So truth frees us. Okay, truth comes through for us. But the waiting in, the, in it is different than that of the side of the lie. So the side of the lie is immediate like an iPod, self-serving, got to save my own ass and do it now with a lie. Even though later that lie is going to be my undoing. If I spoke truth, and then now is that I'm being burned alive for speaking truth. But the later is truth exonerates and will free me. So lies ironically bind us, but lies also undo us. You know, truth is bound up in lies and lies bound up in truth. So also truth is stranger than fiction. Absolutely stranger than fiction. Let your ass, you got some stories. You could come to the porch and tell truth is stranger than fiction. Lies are predictable. Lies are predictable. Truth is a foundation, cornerstone to put yourself, your name, your surname, your kids on. They speak truth. You want that sitting right next to your name. Lies is a house of cards that a tower moment's going to bring down. What you can't do that's gone on for too long, God will come by and do it for you through a holy storm. Don't go outside throwing rocks at his feet. <laughs> Drink up, buttercup. Anyway, 
Lies are also always running ahead. They're always running ahead to hurry up and play the scene and get the geography right and, and seed minds. So lies have to take off running to the next town to, to be ahead of truth because they're a lie. Truth, if you haven't noticed, always comes strutting in the back like John Wayne, three days late and five dollars too short. But when truth shows up finally at the end of the day, it doesn't even have to speak. All it does is walk in the room and the lies shrivel, are no more. Truth shines. So lies show up first and the truth comes behind it. Lies will save your ass right now, but if you tell the truth right now, that's usually going to burn you down right now. Truth exonerates, frees, and shines through and the later of it. Lies are your downfall and the later of it. So it, watch how we serve what we're doing for the now and the later because they both have completely different outcomes, truth and lies. And I just wanted to point that out and how that just drives a... And that drives a a sword line for the for courage. Where do you find courage? Right there in between lies and truth. Now and laters. What are you going to serve? What are you going to pick? And usually I pick truth. And I've always um, asked Jesus in quiet corners, how come when I'm truthful in my life, it always comes back and hits me in the chin. That has a lot to do with because I'm a scapegoat, scapegoated by a narcissist, okay? But, you know, you speak the truth and then you're the one that's made out to be a problem. And it just usually always backfires, and, and I'm like the righteous one, or I'm, I'm being the, the truthful one, the more pure one without, you know, hidden intentions and bad stuff. You know, I come, when I meet people, I have pure intentions, and that's not always, you know, <laughs> honored by other people. But, you know, when we speak truth, we are basically having courage all the time. What are we doing? We are speaking what's all on our heart. We're speaking our hearts out loud. So that's courage. And that's truth. And uh, that's a little bit of the difference on how they serve us. And remember, secrets are just the truth whispered. Secrets aren't really lies. It's funny how our mind almost does that mirage. We say secrets are like, ooh, lies. Secrets and lies, they seem to go hand in hand and bed to bed. No, they don't. Secrets are just truth whispered. Mm-hmm. Let's put that in our little pipes and smoke it. <laughs> All right. All right, so we're going to come back in a minute. I'm going to fill up my coffee cup, come back, and we're going to talk um, a little bit about some some love love slavery, about who and a how and a who and a how and a how and a who, and it's a big love story. So that'll take about, I don't know, seven or so minutes, maybe ten. Come out, hang out with me, okay? We'll leave the porch light on until the bugs come out. <laughs> Stay kind of steady, mind.